So we have a little mini-sode today. After 3, I think Sega realized that Fantasy Star was in a little bit of a rut, so instead of rushing 4 out a year later, they decided to wait 4 years to come out with 4, and meanwhile they outsourced 2 games for the Game Gear. This first one, Fantasy Star Adventure, being a little unsubstantial. Anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about. Fantasy Star Adventure is Sega repurposing their text adventures format to a standalone retail release. Yes, unfortunately, adventure in the title refers to text adventure, with one notable difference. This one is more visual. Maybe a little ironic that the Genesis text games each only contained four or five images each, whereas this Game Gear one has a unique image representing every screen. This is just a singular text adventure released on a Game Gear cartridge. Nothing more, nothing less. The talk option is new, before you would just have to look at whoever you wanted to speak to, but other than that the gameplay is identical. It's not longer or more complex than any of those. My playthrough was only an hour and 16 minutes, and if I were a kid in Japan in 1991, I would be woefully disappointed by this. Hell, I'm an adult in 2023 and I'm still mildly disappointed. They already did every main character from 2, so who's this new one about? Someone from 3? Maybe 1? Well, if you answered a bunch of original characters completely made up for this game that we will never see or hear referenced ever again, well, I owe you a Mountain Dew because that's exactly what this is. They give us a starting year, and that puts it around the same time as Fantasy Star 2, and you can see similar art assets. I would say it's most visually similar to 2, but it's so self-contained that it really doesn't matter when this takes place. And this really has no reason to be a Fantasy Star game, aside from it containing a few Fantasy Star things, such as the teleport station or a magic cap. It has almost nothing to do with the rest of the series. The plot follows a scientist who creates a device that will quote, double the abilities and strength of a human. That might have come in handy in, you know, any of the actual games, but it just acts as a plot device here. The machine and scientist get kidnapped, his sister gives you the news, and it's up to you to break into this rival scientist's compound to get the machine back and rescue your friend. There are some decent puzzles, like when you need to short circuit an electric fence by pouring soda onto its control panel, or the time you need to use a tree branch as a ladder to climb into a ventilation shaft, then later when you find a rope you need to replace the tree branch with the rope so you can reuse the tree branch somewhere else. That stood out to me because I can't recall many instances at all in the other text adventures where you needed to reuse items in multiple places. On your way to the compound you meet this man with a beard who gives you a radio to contact him if you ever get into trouble. This game was made before cell phones so it's funny to imagine this sci-fi super high-tech society using walkie-talkies. But I guess this does have precedence in 2, you know, with the Visa phone. Since you can't have a gun on the mantle place in a play without it firing, eventually you get captured by this guy. Ugh. I don't like the way he's looking at me. He takes away all of your items except for conveniently the radio, so you use it, then perspective shifts to that bearded guy, he gets an ID card, goes undercover in the compound, and then gives the ID card to your own character. While he's undercover, you learn, not you the character, but you the guy playing the game, learn that this new scientist can't figure out how to operate the power doubling machine. So back as yourself, you find the scientist, ask him how to use the machine, and he tells you that his sister, from earlier, remember his sister, is actually an android that he built, and this magic stone that's powering her is the only thing that will get the machine to work. So you leave, get the stone, come back, use the machine to make yourself double strength, beat up the creepy guy, but then the rival scientist uses the machine himself, only instead of doubling his strength, it transforms him into a giant monster. Oh no, then you fight the monster and win. Oh yeah, and that's Fantasy Star Adventure. If you enjoyed the original text games, but wished that they could have a little less to do with the actual Fantasy Star series, then boy howdy is this the game for you. For what it is, it's okay, but unless you're a Fantasy Star super fan, and hell, even if you are, I would say Adventure is entirely skippable. Shout out to the patrons, shout out to William Robert Lee, never trust anyone who needs a haircut. See you next time, goodbye.